So I'm sure by now you've probably already seen or heard about the probe lens. So what this lens does is it ends up giving you this larger than life feel on products and different visuals that you create. But before you go out there and rent this lens, I wanna give you four different things you should consider to make sure that you're not disappointed when you do rent it. And that number one thing is you need a lot of light. This lens starts at an aperture of F14. Most people filming these days really like that cinematic look, so they're usually using a lower f-stop. And what that does is gives you a really nice shallow depth of field. But when you're filming in a macro, you need to have larger depth of field because of how close you are to the subject. Because of this unique lens and how it's constructed, it doesn't even start until that f14. And that's really cool because you can keep more things in focus even though you're tight, but you need a lot of light to accomplish that. In a shoot that we recently did, we used an Aperture Nova 300, and we also had two Aperture 120D Mark IIs. But honestly, to be able to get the kinds of shots we wanted, luckily we had the Sony A7S III, and we were able to set it to its dual native ISO. It doesn't really have a dual native ISO, but it's 12,800 ISO, which is a crazy high ISO. If you don't have a camera that can reach that high of an ISO, you're gonna need more light, but you're gonna want a lot of light or else your shots are gonna be very noisy because you're gonna have to bump up that ISO and also bring that noise floor up. Second, you really need to have a slider, preferably a motorized slider. To get the most out of this lens, having it just pan back and forth or up and down like you would on a tripod won't give the dynamics that this lens was designed for. It really needs to be moving in and out. You really need to be able to pull through, like in this shot. And if we didn't have that on a motorized slider rig, it just would have kind of looked cool. Maybe we could have framed it up in the pages, which just doesn't give the dynamics that you can really get from this lens. Our third tip, and something that we didn't really even think about, was you need to be prepared for the dust that you may have on your sensor. As you could see in this first test shot, there was a substantial amount of dust that we didn't even know was on our sensor. Luckily, we had a sensor cleaning kit. I probably need to do it again, because as you can see in this image, it still has a little bit of dust. So when you do rent this lens, you should either have your sensor cleaned beforehand, or if you have a sensor cleaning kit, and you are very, very careful, you can clean that sensor and make sure that you have little to no dust on it so that when you are filming, that doesn't become an issue. And our last point, point number four, is why did we rent this lens rather than going out and buying it? Now, this is something that you need to decide for yourself. Gear and what you purchase is a very touchy subject, but also is something that's very personal to the individual. The reason why we rented this lens is because we know we're not gonna use it probably more than two, maybe three times in a year. For such a specialty lens, you wanna make sure that if you're just gonna use it a couple times, it's probably more affordable just to rent it than to have it and not really use it. But one of the benefits of actually purchasing the lens is you'll then find ways to start using it on more projects and be more creative. So if you buy it, just make sure you're putting it into your workflow so you test new things that make you even more creative than you were before. But definitely make sure that if this is a lens that you're gonna be using all the time, sure, go rent it from a rental house and test it out the first time. And if you have a good local rental house, oftentimes they will credit that rental towards the purchase. But for most of us, I think because it's a specialty lens, it's just better to go rent it. So hopefully these four tips will help give you some insight and prepare you for the first time that you rent this lens. I would hate for you to go out for your next production underprepared with the amount of light you have, with the dust on your sensor, not having a slider, and just not be prepared to have a successful shoot because no one wants to get something that they can't actually use. Thanks so much for watching our video on the probe lens. If you have any questions, drop them down below in the comments. If you wanna learn more about video production, make sure to check out one of these videos. And if you're interested in growing your video production company, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Cheers.